In South Africa, the leading cause of death is not HIV, but instead a disease commonly associated with it, tuberculosis. Almost half a million people are treated for tuberculosis, or TB, each year, and unlike in many other countries, the number of new infections is on the rise. Zazipo recently moved from the east to the western Cape province of South Africa in search of work and is one of thousands who recently caught this airborne disease. I had TB for about a month now. I was expecting it because I, I, in, at Eastern Cape I was living with my grandma and my sister also who was having TB. I didn't get shocked or something like that because I, 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 I knew it that one day I got it. The dense housing and living environments of South Africa's townships, where the majority of patients reside, are prime conditions for TB to spread from person to person. When I moved here at Eastern Cape, I got ill and then I went to the clinic and they, at the clinic they told me that I'm having TB. Yes. And the MDR, not just normal TB. Yes. MDR stands for multi-drug resistant TB a form of the disease resistant to the two main drugs used to fight it, isoniazid and rifampicin. Whilst treatment for regular TB is already six months on these primary drugs, treatment for MDR-TB is at least two years, with greater drug combinations. Resistance is also on the rise in South Africa and is increasing in intensity. It's become a public health crisis, keeping hospitals like Brooklyn Chest Hospital the main TB referral hospital in the Western Cape province, busy. The University of Cape Town's Lung Infection and Immunity Unit has a research site at the hospital, and head of the unit, Kirtan Dada, is investigating the scale of the problem. Tuberculosis is really a public health emergency in South Africa. The ep epidemic has taken on a new turn now. We now have uh, cases of MDR-TB, but in fact the picture has worsened in that uh, that's been superseded by even more resistant strains now and we call that XDRTB or extensively drug resistant TB where there's resistance to uh, the four main TB antibiotics. Now we have a huge burden of uh, drug resistant TB for example in South Africa we treat almost 8,000 uh, cases of drug resistant TB. The other thing is that we are probably only treating about half the total number of cases that we have in the country, and about 5 to 10 percent of these cases are XDR-TB, so roughly we're treating about 1,000 or just over 1,000 XDR cases of uh, XDR-TB cases per annum, and um, a chunk of these, uh, probably a third of them, uh, are what we call uh, resistance beyond XDR-TB or incurable TB. So we have this phenomenon where uh, these patients are therapeutically destitute, uh, the strains are so highly drug resistant that we cannot, uh, we don't have the antibiotics to treat them. We have li very limited bed space in our hospitals, and so these patients are actually being discharged from healthcare facilities uh, back home, uh, where they reside into the in the community. The decision to discharge patients back into the community is not taken lightly, and requires approval from a range of experts in the field. Julian Terile is the clinical manager at Brooklyn Chest Hospital and has to make this difficult decision with his patients. So in terms of patients that have failed their treatment, um, we have what's called the review committee for their discharge as having failed uh, um, TB treatment. For my patients in the XDR and pre-XDR wards, normally after about six to eight months, we have an idea as to whether they are responding to treatment or not. If there's clearly no response to treatment, in fact, if there's a clear deterioration, then any time from eight months or so, I, s I start to prepare patients for this possibility. But certainly, we need more resources in supporting these patients at home um, more, more frequently than we do. Um, and also resources in being able to set up a small Wendy house or a place for them to sleep um, and uh, away from family and friends. 